You're traveling through the unknown, a journey beyond the corners of reality, where the shadows whisper and the chill runs deep. Welcome to the dimension where your deepest fears are given form. This is The Midnight Mystery. Welcome to The Midnight Mystery. This episode is called, I Found My Dad's Secret VHS Collection. In each episode, we delve into the shadowed corners of our existence, bringing you tales of the eerie, the uncanny, and the downright terrifying. From the realms of the supernatural to the depths of the human psyche, no stone is left unturned, no dark secret left hidden. As the clock once again draws near midnight, prepare to embark on another adventure into the uncanny, the eerie, the horrifying, the midnight mystery. My name is Robert, a coder by day, a loner by nature. A Boston cityscape brimming with technological marvels and unending deadlines used to be my world, until my father's death. The funeral was as gloomy as you'd imagine, the rainy skies of Boston weeping in sync with the gathered mourners. I stood amidst the black-clad crowd, the raw reality of my father's absence hitting me harder than the cold wind. I listened to the eulogies, snippets of a life I realized I knew little about. As an only child of divorced parents, I grew up with my mother in the city while my father chose the seclusion of countryside living. The lawyer, a graying man with soft eyes, handed me an envelope after the service. Your father's will, he explained, his voice a comforting low hum amid the chaos of condolences and shared memories. Robert, he read aloud from the legal document, my only son, I bestow upon you the old family house in the country. Its solitude has been my companion for years. I hope it brings you solace. Solace, a strange choice of words. But then, I had always found my father to be a man of peculiar phrases. A couple of weeks later, I packed up my Boston apartment, trading my high-tech city life for the quaint tranquility of the country. The house was exactly as I remembered from my sporadic visits. A two-story rustic affair, surrounded by whispering trees and wildflower meadows. My first night there, I lay on my childhood bed, staring at the wooden ceiling as the nocturnal sounds of the countryside filled the room. It felt different. Was it peaceful or just plain eerie? I couldn't decide. The next morning, I started sorting through my father's possessions. The task was more emotionally daunting than physically exhausting. Every trinket, every picture was a reminder of the man I hadn't truly known. Dinner was a silent affair. A simple meal I prepared from the limited groceries I had managed to pick up on my way. As I washed the dishes, I gazed out the window, the wilderness reflecting back. Was this what my father wanted for me? A life far removed from my own, shrouded in peaceful seclusion? I was about to find out. It was on my third day in the house when I discovered the box. While dusting the attic, a mildew-scented wooden crate caught my attention. It was stuffed in a corner, layers of dust and cobwebs veiling its contents. Pulling it out, I blew off the dust, the cloud sending me into a sneezing fit. Okay, I muttered, wiping my nose. What have you got in here, Dad? I pried open the crate to find it full of VHS tapes, all meticulously labeled with dates and years. Dates that traced back to my childhood. A sense of curiosity, mixed with a dash of nostalgia, washed over me. I hadn't seen a VHS tape in years. Descending from the attic, tapes in tow, I called a local antique store to find a VHS player. You're in luck, the store owner chuckled on the phone. Just got one yesterday. It's old, but should do the trick. By evening, I had set up the VHS player on the floor of the living room. I decided to start with a tape labeled, Robert, 5th Birthday. As the tape whirred to life, the grainy footage of my 5th birthday party filled the screen. A younger version of me ran around, blissfully unaware of the camera's gaze. My eyes stung, a longing for simpler times filling me. I moved on to the next tape. Summer Picnic, 98. My mother was there, her laughter filling the room, a sound I hadn't heard in years. It warmed my heart and broke it all at once. Dad had recorded it all, moments I had long forgotten. I spent hours going through the tapes, each one a chapter from my past. Thanks, Dad. I found myself whispering into the empty room. I didn't realize how much I needed this. As the night deepened, the nostalgia turned bittersweet. My childhood, my memories were all packed into these tapes. Yet, they all ended in the same unnerving way. 
with a night's view of my room, me asleep in my bed. A chill ran down my spine as I noted a recurring element, a pair of glowing eyes watching from outside my window. With a shaky breath, I ejected the tape, my mind a whirl of confusion and fear. What on earth? I muttered to the uncaring walls. The tapes, once a comforting connection to my past, had suddenly turned into a spine-chilling mystery, one that I knew I had to unravel. As I started to play the third tape, Robert, first day at school, a sense of dread settled in my gut. There I was on the screen, a scrawny kid in oversized glasses, my backpack almost bigger than me. The tape progressed through the day, filled with scenes of timid smiles, gentle encouragements, and my eventual excitement as I navigated the new environment. And as the tape neared its end, the familiar scene of my bedroom at night surfaced. And there they were, those unnerving glowing eyes outside the window. Holy, I muttered, a shiver running down my spine. There was no logical explanation. I had no recollection of these nighttime recordings, let alone the glowing eyes. Every tape ended the same way. Me, asleep in my childhood bed, and the glowing eyes outside the window. My mind raced to make sense of it. Was it a trick of the light, a sick prank, or something more sinister? I couldn't shake off the discomfort. I paced around the room, every creak of the floorboards amplifying my anxiety. I dialed Lisa, my childhood friend and a now local cop. She picked up on the third ring. Lisa, it's Robert, I said, my voice shaky. Robert, it's late. Is everything okay? She sounded alert, the weariness of the late hour forgotten. No, I mean, I don't know. I found some old tapes, I said, struggling to explain. They're of me, from my childhood, but they all end with this. Strange footage of me sleeping. And there are these glowing eyes at the window. Silence. Lisa? Robert, you're probably tired and stressed, she finally said her tone soft yet firm. Moving, the funeral, it's a lot. It could be anything. Glare on the lens, a reflection. I know how it sounds, but I can't shake off this feeling. Can you... Can you come over and take a look? I pleaded. There was a moment of hesitation. All right, Robert. Tomorrow morning. Get some rest now. Relief washed over me. Thanks, Lisa. See you in the morning. As I hung up, I looked around the room the shadows cast by the moonlight seeming more menacing than before. I was left alone with my thoughts, the unending questions, and the unsettling gaze of the unseen observer in the reels. Day turned into night, night into day, and I lost myself in the grainy world of the tapes. The silence of the house was only broken by the whirring of the VHS player and the muffled echoes from the past. The glowing eyes became my fixation, my torment. Each tape held the same pattern. My childhood memories, once carefree and joyful, now clouded by the chilling conclusion. The eyes drew closer with each tape, their sinister glow more prominent, their presence more invasive. I watched, entranced and horrified, as the invisible observer in my past grew bolder. And then the nightmares started. The first one jolted me awake in the dead of night, my heart pounding in my chest. I had dreamt of the glowing-eyed creature its form hazy, its presence ominous. I woke up to the chilling sensation of being watched, the darkness of the room pressing down on me. This pattern soon became a routine. The daylight hours were consumed by the tapes, the nights dominated by harrowing nightmares. Sleep became a luxury I couldn't afford, my days a blur of fatigue and paranoia. Robert, you look like hell, Lisa commented one morning, concern etched on her face. She had been supportive, trying to make sense of the bizarre findings, yet the dark circles under my eyes and my frayed nerves were undeniable. I can't sleep, I admitted, the weight of my exhaustion evident in my voice. She studied me for a moment, her gaze sympathetic yet stern. You need to take a break, Robert. This obsession isn't healthy. I can't, Lisa. I need to know what this is, I argued. The tapes scattered around the room, a testament to my obsession. You also need to rest. To live, she shot back. This is affecting your work, your health. She was right. Emails from work had started piling up, my performance suffering due to my lack of focus. My appetite had dwindled, my reflection in the mirror a ghost of my former self. But the eyes, Lisa, they're real, I can feel it, I whispered, the hope in my voice fading. Lisa sighed, her gaze softening. 
And we will figure it out, Robert. But for now, you need sleep. Real peaceful sleep. Take a break, even if it's for a day. She left, her worry hanging heavy in the room. I looked around, my father's old house now a fortress for my obsession. I knew I was spiraling, my hold on reality growing tenuous. As night fell, I stared at the VHS player, the box of tapes next to it. For the first time in days, I left them untouched. I went to bed, the eerie silence of the house a haunting lullaby, but sleep, when it came, offered no respite. The creature from the tapes found its way into my dreams, its glowing eyes now a living nightmare. The lines between the real and reality blurred, my life spiraling into a chilling echo of the tapes. I started seeing it everywhere, in the shadows that stretched across the hallways, the fleeting movements caught in the corner of my eye, the distorted reflections in the mirror. The creature from the tapes, with its haunting glowing eyes, had breached the boundaries of the TV screen and infiltrated my reality. I would wake up in the middle of the night, my body covered in cold sweat. The image of the glowing eyes burned into my vision. Each creak of the house, every rustle of the wind would make me jump, my heart pounding. Paranoia wrapped itself around me, a shroud I couldn't shake off. Am I losing my mind? I asked my reflection one morning, my face pale and drawn. The man staring back at me was a stranger, his eyes haunted, his countenance haggard. In desperation, I turned to the one thing I hadn't explored yet, my family history. The local library, with its collection of town records and newspapers, seemed like a good place to start. Can I help you with something? The librarian, a kindly elderly woman named Mrs. Keller, peered at me over her glasses. I... I'm looking for information on my family. The local history, perhaps? I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Mrs. Keller nodded, her gaze softening. Your father was a good man, Robert. A bit of a recluse, but good. Let me see what I can find. Days turned into nights as I pored over old documents, census records, and yellowed newspaper clippings. And then, like a chilling wind that cuts through the silence, I found it. A headline from an old local newspaper dated back to the late 19th century read, Local cult disbanded. Leaders arrested. The article mentioned my great-great-grandfather's name, identifying him as one of the cult leaders. The cult, it appeared, worshipped a deity they referred to as the Watcher, an entity described as having glowing eyes. As I read on, my hands shaking, I discovered eerie rituals, strange practices, and a belief that the Watcher kept an eye on the worthy, especially children, guiding them to their destiny. Could this be the connection to the tapes? Was this creature, the Watcher, the unseen observer in my childhood? With a sinking heart, I gathered the clippings, a sense of dread wrapping itself around me. Had I stumbled upon my family's dark secret, or was I a victim of my fractured mind? Robert? Mrs. Keller's voice cut through my thoughts. Are you okay? You look... troubled. I looked up, my face mirroring the fear coursing through me. I found something, Mrs. Keller. Something disturbing. My family. They were part of a cult. They worshipped a creature with glowing eyes. Mrs. Keller's face paled, her eyes widening. Oh dear. My past, it seemed, was darker than I had ever imagined. The line between reality and hallucination blurred further as I spiraled deeper into the mystery of my ancestry and the haunting glowing-eyed creature. I invited Lisa over one afternoon the weight of my discoveries heavy on my shoulders. As we sat in the dimly lit living room, the stacks of VHS tapes a silent testament to my obsession, I shared everything. The tapes, the eyes, the cult. I rushed out, my voice barely more than a whisper. I showed her the newspaper clippings, the records, the pictures. Lisa listened in silence, her eyes scanning the documents, her expression unreadable. She had been my anchor through all of this her rationality a counterbalance to my spiraling thoughts. But this revelation, this linkage to a long-forgotten local cult, was too much even for her to digest quickly. Robert, she started her voice low. This, this is a lot. I mean, an ancestral cult? The creature from your tapes is their deity? I know it sounds insane, Lisa, I replied, desperation seeping into my voice. But look at it, the connections, the glowing eyes... It can't be a coincidence. Lisa was silent for a moment, her gaze distant. 
Then slowly she said, Okay, let's say it's true. What does it mean? Why are you seeing this, this watcher now? I, I don't know, I admitted, the helplessness settling in. Maybe it's the house, maybe it's the tapes, maybe, maybe it's me. Or maybe, Lisa suggested, her tone serious, someone wants you to believe it. Could this be an elaborate prank, or worse, a threat? But who would do such a thing, and why? I asked, the reality of her suggestion chilling me to the bone. That's what we need to find out, she said, determination lighting up her eyes. And just like that, Lisa became my partner in this harrowing journey. She promised to dig deeper, to pull strings at the police station, to find answers. She urged me to take a break from the tapes, to try and regain some semblance of normalcy. But what about the creature, Lisa? I asked, my voice barely audible. What if I continue seeing it? We deal with it, Robert, she replied, her hand firm on my shoulder. One step at a time. You're not alone in this. Her words, filled with unwavering resolve, offered a glimmer of hope in the shadowed corners of my life. Together, we stood on the precipice of an unknown abyss, ready to unravel the twisted ties between the glowing-eyed watcher, the mysterious tapes, and my haunted ancestry. As we dug deeper into the cryptic history of the cult, we discovered tales of horror that sent shivers down my spine. Hidden amidst the pages of old police reports and testimonies were accounts of unspeakable rituals, rituals of human sacrifice intended to appease the Watcher. We are dealing with something sinister, Robert, Lisa said one day, her voice barely a whisper. Her hands trembled as she held an old newspaper article depicting a long-forgotten crime scene. I read the headline, my heart pounding in my chest. Cult ritual turns deadly. Police investigate a possible case of human sacrifice. The image below showed a farmhouse, my family's house. A sick feeling washed over me as I scanned the article. According to the report, the cult conducted sacrificial rituals to ensure the protection of the Watcher for its members and their offspring. The victims were outsiders, people whose disappearance would go unnoticed. With the gruesome reality of the cult's history unveiled, I knew I had to confront the final tape, no matter how disturbing its contents might be. Lisa sat next to me, her hand gripping mine, as I pushed the final tape into the VHS player. The screen flickered to life, and a grainy image appeared, a hidden room in the house. My heart raced as I saw familiar faces, my father and other cult members standing before a statue of the deity with glowing eyes. The room was filled with an eerie chanting, their voices rising and falling in a hypnotic rhythm. As the camera panned, I saw my younger self being led into the room. The chanting grew louder, and I watched in horror as my father bent down to whisper something in my ear. The words were indiscernible, but the look in my young eyes, a mix of confusion and fear, was heartbreaking. The tape ended abruptly, leaving us in silence, the afterimage of the ritual burning in my eyes. That was... Lisa began, her voice trailing off, unable to find the words. Horrifying. I finished for her, my voice barely a whisper. I was a part of it, Lisa. All of it. The room spun around me, and I felt like I was falling into a bottomless pit. The tapes, the cult, the watcher. Everything was a terrifying reminder of my past. But amidst the horror and shock, I knew one thing. I had to face this. The cult's dark legacy, the watcher, the unsettling rituals, it all ended with me. I wouldn't let it control me anymore. It was time to confront the past, to uncover all its secrets, and to put an end to this nightmare once and for all. As Lisa and I pored over old documents and reports, an unsettling realization washed over me. My father's death, seemingly due to natural causes, carried a more sinister undertone. He was the last living member of the original cult, his death the final tribute to the Watcher. The deity was now bereft of its worshippers and was furious, seeking a new offering. Lisa! I choked out, the words tasting bitter on my tongue. My father. He wasn't just a member of the cult. He was the last one. His death. It was a... Sacrifice. Lisa finished for me, her face pale. She looked at me, her eyes wide with fear and disbelief. That means... That means you're the next... Possibly, I replied, the horrifying truth dawning on me. The watcher, it dot 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 IT wants me. The weight of the realization was crushing. 
I was not just a haunted observer. I was the chosen, the last remaining link to the cult, a successor in this horrific legacy. Panic seized me. The sightings of the creature intensified, each encounter more terrifying than the last. It appeared not only in the dead of the night, but in the corners of my vision during the day, its glowing eyes searing into me. I felt its presence, its impatience, its anger. It was waiting, ready for its next tribute. My sanity, already hanging by a thread, began to unravel. I felt the fear taking root in my soul, sprouting tendrils of despair that threatened to consume me. Sleep became a distant memory, replaced by fear-fueled vigils and frantic research sessions. I can't do this, Lisa, I confessed one night, the exhaustion etched on my face. It's too much. It's all too much. Lisa, ever the pillar of strength, reached out and grabbed my hands. Robert, we can't give up. Not now. We need to find a way out. We will find a way out. That night, the Watcher materialized in its most corporeal form yet. Its terrifying existence confirmed beyond the shadow of a doubt. It cornered me, its glowing eyes burning with an unspoken demand. A chilling terror coursed through my veins as I understood what it wanted. A sacrifice. Me. Frozen with fear, I could do nothing but stare into those glowing eyes, their hypnotic gaze pulling me in. It felt like the end. Just as I thought I was about to succumb to the creature, I heard a sound. The front door creaked open, and I heard the familiar sound of Lisa's voice calling my name. Rob! That night, the Watcher materialized in its most corporeal form yet. Its terrifying existence confirmed beyond the shadow of a doubt. It cornered me its glowing eyes burning with an unspoken demand. A chilling terror coursed through my veins as I understood what it wanted. A sacrifice. Me. Frozen with fear, I could do nothing but stare into those glowing eyes, their hypnotic gaze pulling me in. It felt like the end. Just as I thought I was about to succumb to the creature, I heard a sound. The front door creaked open, and I heard the familiar sound of Lisa's voice calling my name. Robert, are you all right? She called out. I wanted to warn her, tell her to run, but the words wouldn't come out. As she entered the room, her eyes widened at the sight of the creature. In the blink of an eye, the Watcher lunged at her, its form shifting from a menacing shadow to a solid entity. Lisa screamed, the sound piercing the silence of the room. But it was too late. The creature was upon her. I watched in horror as Lisa fell to the ground, fatally injured. I screamed her name. Rushing over to her as the creature retreated, it seemed satisfied, its demand for a sacrifice fulfilled. With her last breaths, Lisa looked at me, her eyes filled with sorrow. I'm sorry, Robert, she whispered, her voice faint. I didn't, I didn't mean to. Her voice trailed off, her eyes closing as she breathed her last. I sat there, clutching Lisa's lifeless body, my heart shattering into a million pieces. The deity, having received its due, disappeared, leaving me alone with my grief. I cried out, my screams echoing in the empty house. Lisa was gone. She had become an unintended sacrifice, her life taken by the very creature we sought to banish. The bitter taste of loss and despair filled my mouth. That night, as I mourned the loss of my friend, the creature left me alone. The watcher, it seemed, was sated. But at what cost? Lisa's life was the price of my survival, a price too steep to bear. The horrifying confrontation with the deity and Lisa's sacrifice marked a grim turn in my battle with the Watcher. My enemy had taken from me, inflicted upon me a pain like no other, and while the creature retreated, I was left alone to pick up the pieces of my shattered life, forever haunted by those glowing eyes and the memory of the friend I had lost. I hope you enjoyed our episode. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thanks to you, our brave listeners. Your presence in this shared journey into the unknown is what fuels our stories. Your fascination is our motivation. Did this episode send chills down your spine? Leave your comments, share your thoughts, your theories, your own midnight mysteries. Your feedback is the beacon that guides us through the uncharted territories of our stories. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. By joining the Midnight Mystery family, you won't miss out on a single chilling tale. As a subscriber, you'll be the first to know when a new episode lurks around the corner, ready to pull you back into the shadowy depths of the unknown. This is the Midnight Mystery signing off, leaving you with a simple reminder. 
When the clock strikes twelve, fear the silence, for that's when our tales come to life. Good night, midnight listeners, and remember, not all who wander into the dark are lost.